You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. And you know why, don't you? It was decades ago. You and Gerald weren't just brothers, were you? Then what were we? We were twins. Identical twins. You even dressed the same. But those closest to you, they always knew. They could always tell you apart. And Joshua O'Byrne had known you since you were born. No one else could have even guessed. But Joshua knew. <laughs> what your family must have known. Must have known what? That you were not George. Hello, Gerald. You think I'm not whom I seem? Whoever is. You think I'm Gerald? Something liberating about becoming someone else, wouldn't you say? Is it? Leaving it all behind. Becoming someone else. Living as someone else. Taking on a new identity. If you say so. I suppose if you do it long enough, it would just become natural. Hard to remember who you were before. Maybe with time, you come to believe that you were this new identity. This new person. Is that what you think? They always say there are better actors than those on the stage. Do they? Joshua suspected it almost immediately because of his own son's bullying of you. I couldn't say anything for fear of destroying in death his own son's reputation. But your killing of your left-handed brother confirmed it because he knew that you were right-handed. Having lost one son, your parents had no desire to lose the second, so they decided to cover up for you, even though you had killed their firstborn. Oh yes, I know you were the second, by just half an hour, but second is second, as they say. Now you were the first, the one and only. Gerald becomes George, and George became the dead Gerald, who took the blame for the six deaths. Your family were suspected by those that knew you, so they sent you south. They themselves leaving this mortal coil over the next fearful, brutal, no doubt stressful years. The effects of that day and the guilt of covering up for you, finally finishing them off. So, to be honest, George, the final list was never six. It was six, plus Gerald, plus your parents, nine in all. Just think. You were that close to making those magic double figures. Your proof? Which hand are you holding that watering can in? <laughs> I think that is described as circumstantial evidence. Do each of your roses have names? I heard you talking to them before. Was I? Robert, Michael, Joseph, Gareth, and on and on. You've converted them into what? From young men young idiots that brought terror to the streets of Stockton into beautiful flowers. Was that your thinking? People don't change, Rosemary. Within only a couple of years, an individual's character is usually revealed. You can always see the leaders and the followers, the wolves and the sheep, and the wolves dressed as sheep. Those six, what do you think would have happened if they'd made it to adulthood? How many others would have been intimidated? How many others would have grown to fear them? How many women like you would have dreaded the key in the lock of the front door at the end of a working day? Imagine if they had got older, employed, promoted. What if they had got some real power in their hands, even if they were no more than chief paperclip managers? They would have lorded it over whoever was beneath them on the ladder. A lifetime of inflicting fear on people who just happen to be in the wrong place but at the right time to be hurt. Let your internet search tell you the truth about those that died that day. Or how about those that were saved from having to meet them? People were freed from worry and fear who were never even aware that those lads had ever existed because of the events of that day. Maybe they would have gone on to be good people. Is that what you really believe? Uh, exactly. And your brother? What about him? 
Was he also a bad man in the making? Or was it just that he was the one everyone gravitated towards? The outgoing one, the fun one, the one everyone wanted to be seen with. And yet you? Thirty minutes younger. But that thirty minutes went on to make all the difference. He was the one out on Friday and Saturday night. He was the one that people called for. He was Mr. Popular. You were the one stuck upstairs in the bedroom, lonely and forgotten. He was everybody's friend, everybody's favourite, everyone's first choice. You were the one taken to the archery club. I think you had arranged to meet your brother, away from home, and told him not to mention it to anyone. Then with a knife, or a sharpened implement of some description from your father's shed, you stepped up from behind him and sliced his throat open, so the blood went forward and to the left, and not backwards, towards you. And although several people knew that would never be the same as being able to prove it, because at the end of the day, you two were identical twins. Hmm. Flowers have been a passion of mine for a long time. When I was a young man, much younger than you are today, I would often walk out of Stockton and out into the countryside. Even then, the towns and cities of the north were busy places. I wanted quiet, gentleness, solitude. You see, people have forgotten the connection between themselves and Mother Nature. We've built our tall buildings, raced our fast cars, flown through the air, telling ourselves just how clever we have become. And we are, in some ways, we're brilliant. But every year we become more and more distant from the world which we came from. Most of the time we don't even stand on the soil of the earth. We stand on carpets or metal flooring or concrete. We are no longer of this earth. We merely occupy space upon it. But we all eventually return to the earth. Is that your point? Your sister Catherine, is she still with us? That's an interesting turn of phrase. <laughs> is it? Oh, you must forgive me. Sometimes the modern world appears so confusing. I, I rarely remember what day of the month it is. Oh, I think you're pretty sharp. With the secret you've lived with for all these years, and survived with, I wouldn't think much has ever passed you by. I think it's also having to live with it. Live with what? Guilt? Is that what you're saying? No, not really. Oh? I was thinking along totally different lines. What I meant was, how have you lived with the fear? The fear of the knock on the door. How many times have you heard a siren drawing near and wondered, is this the day? I did think maybe that was the real sentence, not being behind bars, but the threat every morning that by the end of the day you'd be staring out of them. Is that what you thought? I'm guessing that is the real curse of committing a crime. Not how do you get away with it today, but how do you get away with it day after day after day? It must be stressful. It takes a toll, I would think. We all have secrets, Rosemary. Everyone has regrets. Oh, I didn't say you regretted anything. I'm pretty sure you didn't. I just asked how you lived with it. The only way of finding peace within yourself, Ros, is to know that you did what you believed was right. It's just something you learn. I'll remember that. So, what are you after? After? What do you want? Oh, I'm sure I don't want anything. But now that you mention it, life's expensive right now, George. Have you seen the price of electricity and gas and water? Going to the shops isn't cheap either these days. It isn't. This is a nice house you've got here. We're renting ourselves, you see, me and Pete. We could never afford to buy. We dream of it, of course, but we could never afford to do it. That's a shame. It is, I'd agree. It's a deposit, George. The banks are asking a fortune now, totally out of our range. Really? Yes. If only we knew someone willing to help. Willing to help? 
with a deposit? 20% is the current amount for something like, well, like this one. Your house, to be exact. You'd like me to give you the deposit to buy my own home off me? I once heard this story about a teenager that wanted to have a party one weekend when his parents were away. So he left one or two well-placed words on those social network websites. And come Saturday night, 300 people descended on the property. And all it took was a few well-placed words. And even the most ordinary of locations can become a place of pilgrimage. Oh, like that, is it? A lot of bodies, excuse me, people, paid for your house. And they paid far more than money. As the price of liberty, I think, it would be a small price for you to pay. And once I've signed this house and my garden over to you, how would I know that would be an end to this matter? You just have to take my word for it, George. I see. Huh. When I'm in my garden, I see all sorts of things. The old woman at number seven, who is clearly no longer on the same planet as the rest of us. The middle-aged fellow at house 12, flat number three, who still thinks no one noticed all his gentleman callers. And the nice young couple at number 15, that gave their all for all to see every Friday night when they both get paid. I have noticed when you arrived that you arrived alone. Pete's away at the moment. Pete? Would that be Peter Jarvis? Handsome young man, I would have said, in a carefree sort of way. Rather sporting, I thought. I believe he went abroad. Spain. Well, it's almost always Spain these days. A fortnight of lounging around the pool, drinking the local beer, taking in the local culture. I must say, from what I've read, he seemed quite a lot of fun. And his good lady. She was there as well, also enjoying the sun, sea and uh, other things. Obviously quite a holiday. I wonder if they spent too much. I wonder if they had money worries. I'm thinking that might be why, after attaching a hose pipe from the exhaust of his car round to the side door, after which Pete then turned the engine on, and they then went to sleep. Did you follow them? Did you surprise them around the pool, or did you surprise only him? Were you the sister he didn't want? And were there drugs in their systems? And from where? And how did they get into their blood? Did you arrange to meet them later? They inhaled. You, I'm assuming, did not. Chemistry does appear to be one of your things. Drug overdose? Maybe even a suicide pact. It does happen. Who could say? I'm guessing such things will forever now remain a mystery. Well, after all, without the odd secret, how would any of us get by? <laughs> I also can use the internet. I see we understand each other. Oh, Roz, I don't think we do. Why do you say that? You very kindly took an interest in my flower bed a short time ago. Yes, very beautiful. The conversion of useless lives into something colourful, even serene. Correct. And how right you were to pick up on that. I've always been quick on the uptake. Evidently. Or you wouldn't be where you are today. You also correctly noticed the names I'd given to each individual plant. Yes, I did. Presumably each plant is each victim, in order. How right you are again. You really are a very quick studier. You're right. Only... Only what? Mathematics clearly wasn't your strong suit at school. Why do you say that, Gerald? Because... Catherine... 
If it was, you would never have spoken to me today. I'm not sure I understand. Nine bodies. Nine rose bushes. But if you look over here, you'll see what I was working on just before you spoke to me this morning. And what is that? I've just planted a tenth rose bush. Perhaps you should come round for that check after all. In the tenth rose plant, John Hines was George and Lucy Ailey Parker was Rosemary. Artwork for the production was by Sheila Jackson and the play was written and directed by John Fryer. The Tenth Rose Plant is an audio production for Political Art.